Hi, in this video tutorial number seven, I'm going to show you how to put a patcher in a patcher, otherwise known as packaging your keyboard input. When we left off last time, we had just made um, this nice device that converts keyboard, computer keyboard input to um, numerical values that also happen to match the MIDI uh, piano keyboard. I realized there were some problems and I think we should fix those before we move on to packaging them. One of them is that if we lock our patcher here and hit A, which should be um, which should be C on the keyboard the way we laid it out, it's actually hitting um, C D sharp. So we want to go down one, two, three spaces, which would leave this offset at um, 37. So let's give that a try. And I'm not worried about that lack of neatness for the moment, but let's see if it works. No, now it's way down at the bottom. Let's try. Uh, let's try 40 again. Maybe it was just thrown off by my... Okay, so we want it 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 up from there. A nice number, 48. So we'll change this to 48. Okay and lock our patcher and check that it works. There we go. Look at that. Working beautifully. Okay. Now, if we wanted to um, make that adjustable, of course, and I know that's what exactly what you're all thinking is, oh great, let's make it adjustable. Um, we could choose to change this offset, which is generally at 48. So what we would need to do is send this a message that says offset 48. Um, in order to do that, we'll have to learn about a couple new items here. One of them, push new and push load bang. Load bang it just means that when the whole system starts up, when you open this file, this is going to send a bang out and um, uh, it sort of helps you set up your program. So underneath that, we're going to make a message and we're going to put the number 48 in there because that's our standard message. And we are going to send out the number 48. However, it has to be offset 48. So we're going to learn a new message here. Type N. We got a new object. And that message is prepend. And then we're going to prepend means whatever message is coming along, stick this on the front of it. And so we're going to type offset. Don't use capitals and spell correctly, or the machine won't understand it. So when this comes through here, it's going to come out and head on over to Funnel and make sure that the offset is at whatever this box says it should be at. Now, if we wanted to adjust that, I have a very clever way of doing it that I know you will like. And that is, um, we'll press on our arrow keys up and down. Here's the up arrow, and here's the down arrow. Look over here. Whoops. Got to get my cursor farther over there to get that zoom to work right. Okay. Here's the up arrow, 30. Down arrow is 31. Right? So, in this box over here, we're going to type... 
30 and 31. And now we have some extra spaces here to work with. Okay, let's put this guy, oops, come on. attach that so we know when we're getting extra information over here. So what we can do is whatever this number is here, we can also um, put that in a number over here. So let's make a new object called counter. Oh, let's not even bother. Remember, we're lazy people. Option click on counter. And right here we have what I already know we want. This tells you all about how to set up your arguments for counter. You can look at those in your own time. But what I'm interested in is this, which has the increase and decrease values on it. So I'm going to copy that. I'm going to close the window. I'm going to get rid of that counter. I'm going to put in my new counter. Okay, so now we'll get rid of that button. I don't need it. So now every time you hit this key, it's going to increase. And every time you hit this key, it's going to decrease what's in the counter. which we want to be 48, oddly enough. Actually, let's wait on that because I don't want to confuse, confuse things here. Okay, when, load, when this whole thing starts, load bang is going to bang this number 48. And if we run it out of here and into the fourth inlet, I believe, resets counter to number immediately. Okay, We don't want any minimums or maximums in our counter, so I'm just going to get rid of all those arguments. Okay, load bang. Hits the number 48. 48 goes into the counter and should come out here. Let's lock the patcher down and check it. You can double click on load bang or you could just click on 48 of course so it's at 48 unlock it again and if we've done our work correctly I'm sorry lock your patcher back up and let's hit the up arrow goes to 49 down arrow goes back to 48 down arrow goes to 47 my goodness it's working perfectly okay so then, if we take the output of that and have it set the number that's in this box, then every time we do this uh, up, let's uh, lock it again and try up and down. Yes. So now it will remember exactly where you left it the next time it opens it because messages are remembered when you shut max down so everything here's working perfectly and uh, since we're still locked down let's test where um, a is b c d e f g and then if we offset by one by hitting the arrow now we'll hit a again hey Ah, I see, I see. We forgot to hit a bang. If I hit a bang now, there's A. Now it's moved up to there. So not only do we need to set this to 49, we then need to bang this to get it to register over here. Unlock your patcher, and believe it or not, just put a whole nother line over to 49 and it should work okay lock it down again and let's see hit our numbers up and down 
Now we're overdoing it. Oh, it's feeding back into counter. Okay. Oh, got it. Take this line and just run it directly to prepend, and then it shouldn't be a problem. I knew there was a solution to this. Sometimes it's a pain. Okay, now let's see if it works. So nicely. Okay, so we don't have it feeding back uh, around in a loop. That's what happens with max overloads if you run things around in a circle, and it lets you know about it quick. So now we're offset by 50. We'll hit the, uh, sorry, we'll lock down our thing. We'll hit A. Now the letter A on your keyboard triggers the D. Now we'll hit arrow down once, arrow down twice. We can see this is back to 48. And so the letter A should hit C right here. Here it goes. There we go. Great. So our adjuster is working. And not only that, the nice thing about it is that it works from outside of the whole patch. OK. Um, we'd also like to send some outputs out of this patch eventually. You know what? We can encapsulate it first. But we, were, we are going to want to send some out, outputs. So let's go over here and get a couple things. This is an inlet. And we're going to use this for a, well, oops, unlock your patcher. Unlock your patcher. And we're going to put an inlet here in the future to um, for volume control and now we're going to want to put a few outlets down here we're going to want to put an outlet for that number because that's our our um, note number coming out option click on that we're also going to want to put a velocity out we're also going to want to put a frequency out and I think that should probably do it. So this is our note number coming out. And then this is our velocity, the velocity of our note coming out. And how do we get the hertz? Guess what? New object, type the letter M, and we type M for MIDI. Um, MIDI M to F. MIDI to frequency. That's how to remember it. I nearly forgot it. MIDI to frequency. And we'll make it a, um, we'll just make it a number coming out. We can convert that later. Okay. And we'll put it over this box. So when our MIDI comes out of here, OK. So now we've got our frequency coming out, and our velocity coming out, and our note number coming out. So what can we do with this whole big, uh, big mess here? Well. A lot of this stuff we don't need to see anymore, so we can encapsulate it. And um, that's a way of putting things in a patcher. So I'm going to show you how to do that. This is unlocked right now. And so let's encapsulate this, just for example. OK, so that's all selected. And we go up here and we push Edit and Encapsulate. And what it does is it makes the whole thing into a patcher with as many outlets as it needs. And then we want to name the patcher. Let's name this patcher uh, keyboard in. Um, no spaces, OK? There it is, keyboard in. 
and then we have our selection process here. I'm trying to figure out how I can encapsulate all the things I want to, but uh, sometimes you have to move them around a little bit. So let's grab all this stuff and drag it up here, and then grab this stuff and drag it up here. Now we can select all of this. And encapsulate that too. Edit. Encapsulate. Great. Second patcher. And we'll call it space keyboard translate. Looking pretty neat, isn't it? Then we have this. And then we have this stuff, which isn't really hurting us all that much. And now we're going to save this just so we don't lose anything. Make sure it's still working. We'll lock it. Yes, still working just fine. And we're going to put a comment in here somewhere for the future. Hmm. I'm just trying to figure out how to do that precisely. Um, let's worry about that in a minute. First I wanted to show you um, presentation mode here. And so when we want this thing to show itself off, we're going to want to move to presentation mode. Presentation mode, if I can get to it, is this thing down here. And if you click on it, everything disappears. Click on it again and you'll be back in patching mode. That's because it's only going to show you the things that you want to see. So let's unlock our patcher, select this keyboard, and then go over here to the inspector and say include in presentation. Click. Okay. Now, when we go down here and hit pack, uh, presentation mode, the only thing left is this. And this is really all, all we want to see. Right? So we can grab this. It's taking it a little bit. Uh, it doesn't want to. It wants to stay in scale. I'm sure there's a reason for that. And if you really want to be fancy about it, you can resize your window. Then go up here and say, whoops, go to your patcher inspector, tell it to open in presentation mode, and just close that, and then go over here, view, and say define fixed initial window location. Very good. OK, um, save this as it is and close it. Now try reopening it to make sure it works. We, I always go down here, open recent patcher, key to keyboard read, that's me, and there it is, look it opens up like that. Let's make sure that everything actually fired up in here, I'm going to press the A. Oh look at that. 
So there we've done it. A nice keyboard input, and I'm going to check and make sure that my arrows work. Uh, push the up arrow uh, six times. One, two, three, four, five, six. Now I'm going to push A. There's A. B. Uh, plays completely different now. So I can adjust it back down. One, two, three, four, five, six. Hello. Whoops, hit the wrong one. There we go. Hit the sideways arrow instead of the down arrow. All right, very interesting. So save this, and we've made a nice uh, keyboard input for our future noise-making projects. Thanks a lot. See you next time.